Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to be showing kind of what um, being a vet tech is like. So during my summer breaks I come home and I get to be a vet tech at my job. It's an all cat clinic, we do see a bit of exotics. Um, but also this is just for anyone who might be interested in going into the veterinary field but they don't know if they want to go to vet school, do that eight years of school, be the um, doctor. Being a vet tech is great, um, it's just like being a nurse in the human world and you know they're needed. So. In this video, I'm going to kind of show what a vet tech does in the dog, the cat, the equine, any field. You basically assist the doctor and so I'll just be showing you a bit of what I get to do as a vet tech. The first thing you do is when we walk in is we um, get the morning treatment started. Um, you see that cat on the floor, that's our clinic cat, Brittany. Um, we haven't had as many borders due to coronavirus, but we still have a few. So the first thing we do is get them situated. So the first thing we do in the morning is we come do the treatments and since right now we're still doing curbside pickup and we don't have that many borders, um, we're trying to give like some of our cats exercise if we can. So now I'm feeding our cat PETA. Say hey PETA. So PETA's actually in a whole exam room but she has it like all to herself um, and everything. So I'm coming in here to change her litter box. I mixed her meds and her food. She loves this wet food, so I just crushed the peel into a powder, which is something you can do um, if it doesn't have a bitter taste. A lot of times your cat will eat it, you or your dog, but you crush the tablet into a, um, a powder, mix it in the wet food, and they usually don't even know it's there. A lot of cats that come in, whether they're in liver, kidney failure, we just supplement them every day um, with subcutaneous fluids, or not every day, but usually two to four times a week, I'd say, depending on how severe it is. So this is one of our regulars, Maggie. She's been here probably, she comes in for fluids probably as long as um, I've been working here for the past five years at the time I'm making this. Um, she can be pretty grouchy, but um, everyone at the clinic loves her. But if you would just look at that face, it's probably how she feels about all of us. But it definitely helps. It helps keep the extra hydration and everything. But anyways, um, more on our patients. So um, because we're doing curbside pickup now, we get to go out and we talk to the clients. Um, we get a history and everything of what's going on, um, write down any of their concerns. We get a good contact phone number, everything like that. Usually I would go in the room and do this. Um, but again, since the coronavirus and we're not letting anyone in, I go out with my mask on, we talk to them and they tell us what's going on and then we take them on in. So this is me just checking in one of our patients um, and his little cat carrier. And then I get ready to come in. My hair looks really nice in this video and it's actually showing my, my brown hair. I wish my hair was like always this color. See, it got dark again. But anyways, um, then once they're in, we check them in. So obviously this is not the same cat. I'm actually getting ready for a hamster that we had come in from Petco, um, one of our local, one of the local pet stores. Um, so he was losing hair on his back. Um, we didn't know if it was like ringworm or if it was mite. So I wasn't trying to touch him at this point. But if you saw that little bald spot, um, I think it's gonna show it again. That's pretty much what the pet store brought him in for just to see what was going on. As I said before, the first thing we do is, of course, once we bring them in, we get them out of their carrier and we set them up a house. Um, they always get a blanket, litter box, water, um, and food, depending on, you know, how long they'll be staying or if they're diabetic, any type of needs like that. Um, this is one of our regulars, um, Webster. He comes in to see us quite a bit. He's really sweet. Um, and so he was getting a nail trim. So while I got on, while I went on and got his weight, I just went on and clipped his nails just because I know he's pretty calm and cool. Um, sometimes if it's a more stressed or anxious cat, I'll definitely get help to help restrain. Um, but he was really good. As you can see, like I'm laughing and just kind of like joking around with other people walking by. So he's sweet. Um, and you see, he likes his booty scratches. So this is me getting ready to pull um, blood on a cat. Um, she was gonna have a dental. So we always get that pre-anesthetic blood work, but I'll let you hear my coworkers like funny commentary. Intense focus of the vet student as she draws blood from with this cat. Thankfully, the cat mm -hmm. is cooperating. Crikey, it's a slow bleeding. <laughs> Diego's commentary. <laughs> but he'll give her just enough time to put it in the capsule without it clotting. Now we must make sure the cat is not blowing by applying light pressure to the vein. As the vet student transfers 
the blood into the tubes for analysis. Okay, so continuing on, another thing I get to do as a technician, um, depending on where you work, sometimes there's a groomer, sometimes there's not. Currently, we don't have a groomer, um, so we kind of double up as a groomer. I do baths, um, I do nail trims, I even do a little bit of shaving. Um, and in this case, I was doing soft paws on a cat, which is basically like these little caps so that your cat can't scratch up your furniture, can't scratch you. Um, and they just stay on for about two weeks, and you can cut them off, they pop off, and then you redo it. Um, but yeah. So that's what this kitty was here for um, and as you can see I kind of had someone to help distract her while I was doing that. Um, then I also got to bathe the cat. I do do baths. Cats can get baths and some really do well with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Here I'm showing you, I do know how to get vaccines. Um, as a technician, sometimes you do get vaccines. Typically a rabies is the one that, you know, a licensed veterinarian has to give. But um, if it's not that, depending on the discretion of your clinic, how it goes, um, at my clinic, we do things called tech exams, which is where if it's not rabies, the pet's not sick, um, it's likely a booster, like in the case of this kitten. Oftentimes a technician who has quite a bit of experience in the field, knows what they're doing, um, gets to do the exam and everything. So I'm giving the kitten, his dewormer here kind of disguised in a treat so you know positive reinforcement and everything I don't have to start force it down his throat it's also a great way for me to practice um things for vet school listen to the heart rate and everything typically your kittens and puppies won't have that many issues but it's still practice you're just getting used to normal so like if you're considering vet school you know this is where I'm saying like you know it really helps um just doing kind of a basic exam it's not as thorough usually as the doctor does um it's just a quick overlook and usually if there's anything more serious, we point it out to the doctor and then charge for like a full doctor exam. But so here's me giving him his vaccine. Um, he was a really wiggly kitty. Um, usually kittens and puppies are. Um, it doesn't really hurt. It's kind of like you, if you're distracted, you know, it doesn't really help. They don't really freak out over needles like people do. But yeah, continuing on, um, I am, I do do dentals. Um, another thing as a technician, you get to assist in surgery and kind of just like when you go to the dentist, um, typically there's someone who comes and cleans your teeth first. And then after that, the dentist comes in, pulls the teeth, you know, looks over it. So this is what I'm doing here. It's just pulling tartar off of the tooth. Um, then I'm scaling the teeth down, getting any excess tartar, you know, just cleaning the teeth, making them look really, really white and everything. And afterwards, she'll put the polish on. We have a minty polish, um, just kind of like when you're at the doctor or at the dentist, the technician or the nurse cleans your teeth and then the doctor comes behind. So as a technician, you do get to help in surgery. You're not the doctor, you're not performing it, but you're helping, you're watching the vitals, you're handling like, instruments and you get to see it. So it's really cool. Like, it's really cool. So as I kind of mentioned before, like as a technician, you're basically the doctor's assistant. Um, so here I'm showing you inside this cat's ear because I have something pretty cool if you see all that crud and then I'm going to show you what that is. Um, but this was a cat that was limp um, in the back um, of his legs. And so as a technician, you know, I'm restraining. I'm kind of at the doctor's side. So you, as a technician, you know, if you don't want to be the doctor, if you don't want that financial responsibility, all that school, you still get to help. You get to see all the cool stuff. And, you know, you're right there. You get the animal care. You get to make sure the animal's not stressed. And you get to give the best neck rubs and everything. So in this video, she's testing for pain to see like how deep the injury might be. Like, can this cat actually feel pain? Um, you know, might he ever get feeling back in this leg or be able to walk? And we're comparing it to the other side. This doesn't hurt, um, but we're just testing, you know, his right versus his back left leg. Um, so here we're taking x-rays, me and one of the other technician. So again, as a tech, you get to do x-rays and stuff like that. And as a doctor, you analyze those x-rays. So um, we're positioning him gently here just to give it, we're trying not to stress him out too bad. Um, and after that, I take it to go look at it. So as you can see here, um, I don't know if you can't tell, but that hip is broken. It you know, should be straight. It's just like your pelvis. Um, and so one of his legs is, you know, dangling. So here I'm setting up the microscope. If, like you remember, I said, remember that crustiness down in his ear, which is not earwax. Um, there is a difference between earwax, but the crust comes from ear mites. And so you can see these in your cats, your rabbits, your ferrets. Um, 
but it's contagious not to people but to other cats and other rabbits and stuff but they basically live down there microscopic um, and this just causes severe itching severe irritation and it can cause secondary infections I just thought it'd be cool to show the mites um, depending on your clinic you might read it me as a technician I know what I'm looking for especially too as a vet student but sometimes you would set it up for the doctor to come and read and make a diagnosis after that um, this is the hamster from earlier. So we were checking him for fungus. Um, so you, fungus usually glows under ultraviolet rays. So what we do with cats, rabbits, anything that comes in that we suspect being a fungus, we show it under there. This hamster actually only had mites. He did not glow. So that's good because mites are easy to treat. Um, here's just more exotics that we see. We see rats. So this is a baby rat. He's only a few weeks old. Um, he was actually really, really sweet. And I thought he was like super, super adorable. Um, I know some people are opposed to rats, but fun fact, they're very clean. They're very smart. And you can actually train them to do tricks like walk on a leash. And he was really cool. I want a rat. Um, we also get to see rabbits. Um, this was a rabbit. He was just in for a nail trim. Um, but we see rabbits for urinary tract infections, for upper respiratory, for GI tract um, diseases and all of that. Rabbits get dentals. We do spays and neuters on rabbits. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I was trying to show y'all a good view. So I was just getting ready to cut his nails. Some of them weren't long, but yeah. Um, but I know I have to get over that fear, especially being a doctor. It's going to be a lot of things I have to call and tell clients. Um, but as a technician, like, I get experience. I'm just, like, I guess gaining my confidence. Like, I'm not wondering. Um, like, the doctor here, Dr. Stein, she tells me you need to be confident. Like, you are going to be the doctor, and they're going to believe you. So, um, with this one, I'm just calling to let this um, client know that her cat's ready, everything that we went over, and the medication that we're sending home. Hi, this is Brittany calling from Cat Care Fayette. Hi, so Dr. Stearns just got a chance to look at Louie. Um, he's all ready to go, but I was just gonna go over everything before we got you to come on. So he did have a bit of chin acne, um, which can be allergies, and she agreed with you that the runny, um, the runny eyes and the runny nose can be allergies. So we're sending you home with just um, a mild allergy medication, chlorpheniramine. Um, and then also we're calling in your prescription of famotidine and the only thing right now she's recommending is getting a dental cleaning. He does have a neck lesion on one of his teeth, which is basically just where the enamel and everything wears down. So it is painful. And yeah, so um, today is not a surgery day, but we can get it scheduled as soon as possible. So in this video, the last thing as a technician is that on weekends, on days that your clinic is closed, typically you're going to be the one that comes back up to the clinic to take care of any boarding pets, and in this case, any hospitalized pets. Um, so I had just flushed her catheter. She had pancreatitis, um, and so now I was just hooking her up to fluids while I was going to be there. So I was at the clinic for about two hours cleaning and doing the um, boarding animals, and so I let her run on fluids. So she has a nice, comfy bed. You tape her um, IV catheter in so wait that she can't ink it out and then you get ready to set the pump um at the rate that you want it it's pretty loud and obnoxious um but so i'm just setting it so typically you want 100 um, milliliters of fluid infused for the cat um so that's just what i was setting it to and then anything that she didn't get iv i would supplement subcutaneously which just means under the skin um so typically if we were here for a normal day we wouldn't set it at 25 milliliters per hour that's a pretty high rate but i was only going to be here for a few hours so that's also something you do as a tech is you take care of things over the weekend be sure to um like and subscribe thank you for watching and imagine me doing the peace sign and until next time stay cool